Another anti-trans care ban has been passed. At this point, it is one of hundreds of anti-trans bans or anti-trans bills that have been passed at this point. And it's just terrifying because, I mean, it's literally been for a couple years now that a very clear intended anti-trans, uh, like, basically genocide movement has been brewing and has been actively advocating for legislative discrimination against trans people and a legal taking away of their rights. Not just like, oh, let's advocate for harassing them and, you know, spreading misinformation about them and pushing hate against trans people. Let's actively fight to advocate for laws that crack down on their rights. Which is a very distinct difference between what anti-trans rhetoric was like back you know, say during Gamergate in that time period, and now. There were anti-trans bills back then, to be fair, but anti-trans hysteria wasn't anywhere near back then where it is now. Everybody now in the right-wing sphere is just screaming and shitting and pissing about trans people. Not- that wasn't quite what was going on back in, like, 2016. It's way worse now. And to add on to it, we've of course got all these bills that are getting passed, and one of the most recent is in Missouri. Missouri is of course a hard red state, and uh, the story goes as follows. By the way, I have trans friends that live in Missouri. Very close, good trans friends that live in Missouri. And this is very much bad news. It's not surprising news, but it's bad news. It's disheartening. And I feel very bad about my both my trans friends and trans friends that live, uh, trans friends and trans fans that live in uh, Missouri and are going to have to deal with the bow, bow, blow back of these horrific bills. <sighs> Missouri lawmakers approved significant restrictions on transgender people on Wednesday, sending the Republican governor for his signature me measures that would ban transgender affirming care. Uh, and prevent transgender girls and women from playing on female sports teams. Remember, guys, as I, I literally said this earlier in the stream, by the way, they never give a shit about trans men. Notice how none of these bills tend to discriminate against trans men. It's always trans women, because none of it is actually even a legitimate disagreement with the concept of transgenderism. It's all just them going against what they find to be the most disgusting in their mind. And in their mind, they tr they find trans women far more disgusting than, and, like, more of a threat than they find trans men to be, right? And so they don't really talk about trans men that much, which is why these bills literally always and almost exclusively uh, focus on trans uh, women. Transgender minors in Missouri no longer would have access to puberty blockers, hormones, or gender-affirming surgery under legislation passed by the Republican-led legislature Wednesday. The ban also affects some adults. Medicaid health care won't cover any gender-affirming care in the state, and surgery will no longer be available to prisoners and inmates. The ban on participating in female- by the way, this is like one of those uh, compromise additions, by the way, that they put in there. Because if you're pro-trans and you try to argue against it, it's very easy for them to pull a very disingenuous response that makes it seem like you're just trying to, like, defend horrible criminals uh, being able to, like, get away with raping people in prison or whatever. Like, the reason why they banned the gender-affirming care for prisoners and inmates specifically is because if you try to advocate against that compromise, quote-unquote, you seem like you're advocating for criminals. Which is, you know, in our very liberal, like, right-leaning Overton window government, uh, a very easy way to politically, uh, you know, stigmatize yourself pretty badly. <laughs> The ban on participating in female sports teams would apply from kindergarten through college, both at public and private schools. Imagine, like, remember, you know how these people talk about, uh, like, trans women who compete in sports, right? They talk about these trans women like they are legitimately, like, these monsters, these malicious demons who are pretending to be women to try to, like, get ahead in sports. So when they ban literally minors who are trans women, and trans girls from being able to participate in these sports. That's them indicating they think that these children are malicious, evil, predatory monsters. 
because there's no other reason to ban them from the sports teams in the bathrooms unless you think they're a threat too. They say they just think they're victims of the grooming, but clearly the way they treat them, they see them as, as like, hateable and a threat. Granted, to be fair, we had that one, um, Florida legislator, uh, uh what's, what was his name, Rep Barnaby, who, uh, called all the children, uh, who were LGBT that were, uh, uh, like, protesting the anti-trans bills in Florida. He called them demons and imps and said he rebukes them because they're servants of Satan to their face while they were there to protest his anti-trans legislation. Governor Mike Parson threatened to keep lawmakers working beyond the normal end of their session if they didn't approve the gender-affirming care ban, which would take effect August 28th. Yes, they, the Republicans will absolutely just play the most horrifically, like, unfair and, like, slimy moves to get their bills passed uh, and take away the rights of minorities. By any means necessary, they have to win. That's their only goal. Their, their core principle is winning. When you have kids being surgically and or chemically altered for life for no good reason, yes, it's time for the government to get involved, Republican Representative Brad Hudson told colleagues on the House floor Wednesday. Remember guys, these people are constantly the ones screaming and, and, and whining about freedom and how the government needs to be small and the government needs to stay out of the lives of individual American citizens and it should be the parents who have the power here and the government shouldn't be controlling what parents get to con um, you know, teach their kids. It is all hypocrisy. It is all hypocrisy. If it's teachers teaching that slavery w or was like a bad thing in schools, then no, parents should be teaching their kids uh, things like this. But if it comes to like a uh, parent teaching their kid it's okay to be trans and like being supportive of their trans kid, take the kid away. The only through line is that they are anti-trans and anti-anything progressive. They want to shut down the freedom of speech of everybody to the left of them. Democrats wept during debate. To deny these children care is to deny them their very existence, Democrat Representative Joe Adams said. I, I fucking hate this. I hate when you read an article like this and it's like the Democrats literally weeping as Republicans laughing with their like smug smiles on their face say, to deny these children care is to deny their very existence, Republi or de uh, a Democratic uh, Representative Joe Adams said. Like, they're right and they're correct, but they're moralizing. You can't moralize with these people. They are evil. They know that they are causing demonstrative harm to these children. That's why they're doing it. You can't say to these people, what you're doing is going to hurt people and think that's going to change their mind. They're doing it because it will hurt people. You, you, like, what do you think? You're literally like the most... Ah, oh, God, Democrats can be so naive. They can be so goddamn naive. You can't fight these people on, like, even playing ground. Because they will change the pitch to be more favorable to their side. At least 16 states have now enacted laws restricting or banning gender-affirming care for minors, and several states are still considering bills this year to restrict or ban care. Creating uncertainty for many families. Florida and Texas have banned or restricted the care via regulations or administrative orders, and a bill to restrict care is on, Re is on Republican Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' desk, which of course will get passed. Hey chat, how many of you guys got into, like, debates with uh, conservative transphobes back in the day? And they would respond to the phrase trans rights by saying, what rights don't trans people have? And back then, there was actually a little bit of, like, that was actually a fairly decent gotcha, right? Because a lot of transphobia, at the time at least, wasn't necessarily in legislative, um, like, it wasn't in the law, right? It wasn't outright legal discrimination against trans people. There were cases of this, of course, and there were issues, but you really already had to be kind of on board with, like, people being trans to agree that the... Uh, road that the speed bumps in the way of uh, accessing gender affirming care that already existed um, were too much. You had to already be like pretty pro trans to agree with that, right? Now, though, I have not seen anybody make that argument in over a year. I've not seen anybody say, What trans rights? What trans rights to what? You know, I haven't seen 
that argument in a long time because at this point they actively know consciously they're taking away trans people's rights and they don't even argue that they're not anymore. They don't even operate on the presumption that they're not anymore. In response, the Kansas City Council was considering a resolution Wednesday to make Missouri's largest city a sanctuary for people seeking such medical care. Medical care. Bailey, now campaigning to, s to keep the job in 2024, launched an investigation in February into St. Louis Washington University Transgender Center following a former staffer's complaints that doctors were prescribing hormones too quickly and without enough mental health wraparound services. An internal Washington University review found no malpractice. Bailey has since expanded his investigation to any clinic offering pediatric gender-affirming care in Missouri and demanded records from a St. Louis Planned Parenthood where doctors provide such care. In April, Bailey took the novel step of imposing restrictions on adults as well as children under Missouri's consumer protection law. A judge temporarily blocked the limits from taking effect as she considered a legal challenge. Under Bailey's rules, before gender-affirming medical treatments can be provided by physicians, people would have to document that they experience an intense pattern of gender dysphoria for at least three years and undergo at least 15 hourly sessions with a therapist for at least 18 months. Screening for autism and social media addiction, quote-unquote, whatever that would entail, would be required, and a treatment provider would ha have to declare that any mental health issues are resolved. So, reminder, by the way, gender dysphoria treating care, so gender-affirming care, is the cure, or is the treatment for the vast majority of trans people's, like, mental health anguish. So the reason why they added that caveat is because it allows them to circumstantially basically blackball the vast majority of trans people from accessing uh, gender-affirming care, because that standard is basically like saying you're not allowed to have antibiotics if you have a currently uh, going bacterial infection in your body. Like, that that's the level, that's literally the standard they're setting. Zan, shouldn't this be unconstitutional due to the logic of Ogberfell v. Hodges, which argued that gay marriage not being legal was a vi violation of the Civil Rights Act because it was discriminated against based on sex? So discriminated, discriminating healthcare based on sex would be happening with banning trans medicine, right? It is anti -con It is, of course, unconstitutional, but here's the thing. Republicans don't give a fuck about the Constitution, number one. And number two, when Republicans have unchallenged control of the government, they do whatever the fuck they want, and they do fascism. When you're in a red state, and they have literally uncontested, uh, like, electoral control, they can just do stuff like this, and nobody can stop them, really. Some courts might be able to block the bill, but besides that, it's quite unlikely in these red states. It's why Bernie or Busters are so stupid, because voting does really matter. Voting is the difference between laws like this being able to get passed and not. It really frustrates, r frustrates me for that reason when people talk about voting like it's this meaningless thing that has no genuine impact, especially when it comes to a state or more community-based level, because literal cities, if they have a blue and left-leaning and favorable enough uh, uh, government, can pass laws that can make them an island, a, a refuge island within a red state. For example, apparently Kansas City just became a trans sanctuary city. So, like... It is very important to vote blue no matter who, even on, like, your very local elections. You need to be politically active. I know voting doesn't feel like it matters, but it does. You can, you can literally do mail-in ballots depending on where you are. You don't even have to leave the house. And when you don't even have to leave the house to do it, there is no excuse.